in the in this case, we are going to have now the discussion of the testing of difference, or testing the difference between the two means of dependent samples. In the previous discussion, in the previous slides, the t-test was used to compare two sample means when the samples were independent with each other. In this presentation, it's different version of t-test. This version of t-test is used when the samples are dependent. So when we say the samples are dependent, it is considered dependent when the subjects are paired or matched in some ways. Okay, so this would be the formula for the t-test. Okay, so you have uh, the t is equal to d bar minus the mu sub d all over the uh, Var the standard deviation of the d divided by the square root of n, where the degrees of freedom, so this is degrees of freedom, is equal to n minus 1, where our d bar, okay, or the difference, okay, by the way, when we say d, the d is the difference of pair, and then d bar is the sum of d over m. And our, this one, okay, S sub D is equal to the square root of D N times the summation of D squared, the, the difference of the pair squared, minus the sum of the difference of the pair all over the N times the quantity N minus 1. So let's have an example. In preparation to the Palarong Pambansa, the coach claims by taking a special vitamin, a weight lifter can increase his strength. Eight athletes are selected and given a test of strength using the standard bench press. After two weeks of regular training, supplemented with the vitamin, they are tested again. Test the effectiveness of the vitamin regimen at alpha equals 0 0.05, each value in these, these data represents the maximum number of pounds the athlete can bench press. Assume that the variable is approximately normally distributed. So we have here the athlete and the uh, before and after. So when we could really uh, say that this is a dependent value or dependent sample because okay, the first athlete is taken, uh, is then uh, getting the before, the benchmark, and then after. So you have one athlete and then they have two, uh, that, that athlete was then taken to data. Okay, so in other words, they are dependent with each other. Okay, so step one, we are going to get the claim. Okay, in this case, we have here, so clearly that the step one, our null hypothesis, okay, we have mu one is equal to mu two because there is no significant difference at all. Here, the our alternative hypothesis, since you have here taken that the weight lifter can increase his strength. So in other words, Okay, the alternative hypothesis is that our mu one, okay, the before is less than the after, okay, because it increased after they took the uh, vitamins. That's according to the claim of the coach. So in other words, it, the if our mu one is the before and mu two is our after, then the claim. Okay, the, the mathematical statement of the alternative hypothesis is that you have the uh, before, the, the mu1 is less than the mu2 because the mu2 increased. Okay, so and take note that this is the, okay, this is our, this is the claim of the, uh, the coach. Okay, now for our step two, we are now going to compute. Okay, 
we're going to compute the uh, the t value. So taken the formula that the t is equal to the d bar, okay, minus the mu, okay, over you have the s sub d over the square root of n. Okay, let's take this one to our Excel. So this is now the Excel. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is we are going to, since the formula stated, uh, the formula stated in the discussion or in the presentation is we're going to get the difference. So here, that's our D. So for our D, we are going to get the difference of before and after. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, in the formula also, we have here the summation of our D. So in other words, we are going to get the sum of the differences. Okay, so the, the sum is negative 19. And then, we are going to get the squared of the D. So you have D squared. Okay, so what we are going to do is you have the D times itself. Okay, and then we are going to get again the square, the sum of the, uh, the D squared. Okay, so uh, we already have now our uh, our D. Okay, the D bar here, okay, should be equal to the uh, the the mean of the D. The sum, okay. So for the D bar, okay. So we have this one divided by the number of elements. So we have eight elements. Okay, so that is our uh, D bar. Okay, so for uh, we have the D bar. This is our D bar. We cannot place a bar okay, in the above the D. So let's just type it. And then we have the S sub D. Okay, so for the S sub D, you have there the square root the square root okay of you have the you have within the square root we have the numerator so we have first uh, open parenthesis our n is 8 okay 8 okay times the summation of d squared so this one okay minus Okay, let's have first, okay, minus, you have the, uh, this one, squared, so times itself. Okay, and then, close again, divided by, you have the, uh, open, the n is 8, 8 times, okay, 8 minus 1, close, and then close again, and then 1 close. So for our s sub d is equal to our uh, 4.838462, okay. Okay, so we have now our d bar, we have now the s sub d. So in this case, we can now compute the t. So the T is equal to, okay, you have the D bar, okay, D bar minus zero, okay, over, okay, over, let's have uh, open parenthesis, our SD, okay, divided by the square root, okay, oops, the square root, of our n, which is 8. Close, then 1 close. So in other words, our t is equal to negative 
3.6. Okay. Let's try to substitute this one in our formula. So our d bar is equal to negative uh, 2.375 minus 0 all over our s sub d is equal to 3, uh, 4 rather. You have 4.8. 3.8 over the square root of our n is 8. So from our uh, calculation in the Excel, our computed t value must be equal to negative 1.388. So in other words, the computed t value is equal to negative 1.388. Okay, so let's have now our uh, our tabular tabular t value. So for the tabular t value, our n is equal to eight. Therefore, our uh, degrees of freedom is equal to eight minus one, which is equal to seven. Okay, let's go to our table. Take note that the alpha is zero point zero five. So this is one tail again. And then our n is our degrees of freedom is equal to uh, 7. So 7. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is our uh, t, uh, tabular t value. Now take note that our... Uh, our null hypothesis is, uh, our alternative hypothesis is mu1 less than mu2. Therefore, it should be left tail. So if we go back to our, uh, our example, we have here that the t, okay, our alternative is mu1 minus, uh, mu1 is less than mu2. Therefore, if we are going to, uh, if we are going to plot that one, okay, in the uh, normal curve, so assuming that this is our normal curve, so the center is zero, okay. Since this is left, uh, left tail, because mu one is less than mu two, okay. So left tail, therefore, okay, this would be our shaded portion. Take note that in a tab in the in the table in the previous uh previous presentation or previous slide, the t there. Okay, is equal to uh, 1.895. Now, take note that this is left tail, therefore, it should be negative. Okay, so the tabular, okay, the tabular okay, value, t value is negative 1.895. So, this is negative 1.895. Now, take note that our uh, computed t value is negative 1.388. So somewhere here. Okay, somewhere here. So this is negative 1.388. Okay, it belongs to the, uh, the, the negative 1.388 okay, lies within the unshaded portion. Therefore, we could say that our uh, tabular, uh, our computed t value our computed t value is less than the tabular t value. So it means to say, okay, that we are going to do not reject the null hypothesis, which implies the null hypothesis, which implies that we are going to reject the alternative hypothesis. So in, take note that the uh, the claim of the uh, coach is the alternative. Therefore, since we do not we reject the null the alternative hypothesis, therefore we could say that there is no statistical evidence.
to support the claim of the coach. What is the claim of the coach? The claim of the coach is that the strength of the weightlifter will increase after they were going to take the special vitamins. In this case, since we reject the alternative hypothesis, okay, we could now say that there is no increase, there is no significant increase of the uh, force or the strength of the weightlifter. So in other words, because there is no significant increase or there is no significant difference whether they took the vitamins or not, their uh, strength will just statistically the same. There will be no improvement. Even if we could say here in the result that there is somewhat improvement from 210 to 219, 230 to 236, and so on. As we can see here, okay, only, uh, we, only the fourth player or the fourth uh, athlete okay, has, de uh, has decreased. Okay. And the sixth player or the sixth uh, athlete. And then the eighth, constant. So as you can see, any, any one except for those three increases. However, these increases or these increase okay, are not statistically different from the before they took the vitamins. Okay. Let's proceed to Z test for amine. Okay. Um, many hypotheses are tested using the statistical base based on the general formula, the observed value minus expected value all over the standard error. Okay. The T test, okay, the T test for independent samples and the T test for dependent samples are actually patterned to the general formula of test value the observed value minus the expected value all over the standard error. The observed value is the statistics or which is the mean okay, of the samples that is computed from the data or the sample data. The expected value is the parameter, which is the uh, population or the population mean that you would expect to obtain if the null hypothesis were true. In other words, the hypothesized value. The denominator is the standard error of the statistic being tested. In this case, the standard error of the mean. Okay. So this is now the formula for the Z-test. Okay. The Z-test is the statistical test for the mean of the population. It can be used when n is greater than or equal to 30 or when the population is normally distributed and the population standard deviation is known. Now take note, huh? take note that we can only use Z-test if 1, if n is greater than 30, or the population is normally distributed and the population standard deviation is known. The formula for the Z-test is you have the X bar, over uh, x bar minus mu all over the uh, sigma divided by the square root of n, where the x bar is the sample mean, the mu is the hypothesized population mean, the small letter sigma is the population standard deviation, and n is the sample size. For the z-test, the observed value is the value of the sample mean, and the expected value is the value of the population mean. So this one is our uh, this one is our observed mean and this one is our population mean. Okay, assuming that the null hypothesis is true, the denominator, which is this one, okay, is the standard error of the mean. The formula for the z-test is the same formula for the situation where you are using a distribution of sample means. Okay, so if you can still recall in our uh, in your previous uh, statistics, okay, the central limit theorems allows us to use the standard normal distribution to approximate the distribution of sample means when n is greater than or equal to 30. So let's have an example. 
A researcher claims that the average daily expenses of public teachers is less than 80 pesos. He, select, he selects a random sample of 36 teachers. Is there enough evidence to support the researcher's claim at alpha equals 0 0.1? Assume that the standard deviation of the population is 19.2. So we have here the data. So 60, 50, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's have the steps. Okay, let's have now the solution. Okay, so for our solution, for our step one, we are going to determine first the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, a hypothesis rather. So in this case, our, our null hypothesis is we could have the, the population mean is equal to 80 pesos. And the alternative, okay, and the alternative is you have the mean, the mu, is greater than 80 pesos. Why it is greater than? Okay, remember that you have there the average is, is ah, by the way, this must be less than. Okay, this must be less than. Okay, so, sorry, sorry. So, less than. And which is the claim of the uh, researcher that the average expenses of the public school teachers is less than 80 pesos. Okay, for our step two, we are going to compute the, uh, the Z value. So for our, uh, this one, Z value. It is Z value because our N is greater than 30. Okay, so the formula for the Z is equal to, you have the sample mean minus the population mean all over the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So in this case, our uh, we are going to compute our standard, our sample mean. So this is now the, 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 the data. So let's try to have the uh, average. Okay. Is it, uh, okay, highlight these numbers. Okay, so which is equal to 75. So uh, we can now have our uh, Z value. So for our Z value, okay, Z value, uh, the formula is you have, okay, the expected, okay, minus the uh, uh, the not expected the computed minus the the mean okay which is eighty divided by you have uh, the population standard deviation given is nineteen point two so you have uh, you have the nineteen point two divided by Okay, you have the uh, square root of okay, square root of n, which is thirty six. Okay, thirty six. Close, close, and then that one. So in other words, our computed z value is negative one point five six two. Okay, let's substitute that one to our uh, manual computation. So you have here. The sample, the sample mean is 75 minus the mu is 80 over the uh, population standard deviation is 19.2 divided by the square root of 36, which is equal to okay, negative 1.56. So this is now our computed Z value, negative 1.56. Okay, for number three, we are going to determine now the, uh, the uh, we are going to determine the tabular Z value. Take note that we have alpha 
equals 0 0.10, which is, uh, this is uh, our significance level, and then uh, this is one tail test, left tail test to be exact. So since this is a left tail test, okay, we are going to look for 0 0.10 in our table. So this would be our table. Okay. Now, in this case, what we're going to look is we're going to look for the number that is very close to um, 0 0.100. So let's look for the number inside here. So 1.00. In this case, okay, the very close number to 0 0.10 is this one. So this is the closer number. We could not use this one because it is too far from 0 0.10, uh, 0 0.10, and this one also. Okay, so let's look for the number above. This is the number. And on each side, okay. So in other words, the Z value, the tabular Z value, is equal to negative 1.28. Okay. So negative 1.2 and then we have 0 0.8. Okay. Uh, 0 0.08. So that would be our tabular. Okay. So in this case, our tabular Z value. Okay. Tab is equal to negative 1.28. Now, if we are going to okay, make this one or illustrate this one in our uh, normal curve, okay, so since this is left tail test, so, sa, so somewhere here, okay, the shade must be somewhere here. So let's say this is negative 1.28, okay, however, our, uh, our, Computed Z value is negative 1.56. So somewhere here. Okay, somewhere here. So that is negative 1.56. Therefore, we could now say that the tabular, uh, the, the computed Z value, okay, is less than the uh, tabular value. Since this is less than the tabular value, it implies that we are going to reject the null hypothesis. And this also implies that we are going to do not reject the alternative hypothesis, which is the claim of our, uh, our uh, researcher. Therefore, we could now say, since we do not reject the, null hypo the, the alternative hypothesis, then we could say that there is now a, a statistical evidence to okay, support the claim of the researcher. So there is statistical evidence. To support the claim of the researcher. Okay, what is the claim of the researcher? That the that the uh, average daily expenses of the public school teachers is less than eighty pesos. So that's how we are going to compute using the uh, the manual computation. Now let's try to use the uh, megastat. So this is now the, the, the Excel. Okay, what we're going to do, we go to add ins, megastat, and then we go to hypothesis test, and then we have mean versus hypothesized value. So our input here in input range, we're going to highlight those numbers. Okay, and then our hypothesis must be 80. Okay, and then uh, our alternative is less than. 
and we are going to get the uh, take the z test and then the confidence interval here since it is uh, the alpha is equal to 0 .0, uh, 0 0.10 then this must be equal to 90 percent okay and then click ok wait for the result so we have here the z value is equal to uh, negative 1.61 So as we can see here, the output, uh, it's not the same because when we check here, the N is 37. So I included the last one, which is this is our mean. So be careful on inputting our values. So here, there, this is just equal to, okay, this must be equal to only to 36 data. 70. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, let's. There is something that I input. This must be less than. Okay. So here our Z value is uh, negative 1.57. Uh, why it is negative 1.7? If we go back here. Okay, that is negative uh, 1.56. Uh, there is a discrepancy, but very, uh, very uh, minimal discrepancy here. Uh, maybe the, the formula here, uh, they have uh, rounded off. Okay, so in this case, our uh, Z is negative 1.57. Okay, and the p-value is greater than the uh, alpha which is the uh, zero, not, uh, as we can see here, the, 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 the p-value here is less than uh, 0 0.10, which is our alpha. So since our alpha is uh, much lesser compared to our uh, significance level, then we could say that we... Uh, uh, the, the the alpha must be uh, the the null hypothesis must be uh, rejected. Okay, so we are going to reject. Take note that the p value must be to reject the to reject the null hypothesis. The p value must be lesser than the alpha level. Take note that in our example, the alpha is equal to zero point one zero. So since it is less than, uh, since the p-value is less than 0 0.10, then we are going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay. So let's have testing the difference between two means using the z-test. Okay, so let's say, um, suppose a researcher wishes to determine whether there is a difference in the average age of the senior high school students who enrolled in urban school and those who enrolled at the rural school. In this case, the researcher is not interested in the average age of all senior high school students. Instead, he is interested in comparing the means of the two groups. His research question is: Does the mean of the average, uh, the mean age of the senior high school students who enrolled at the urban school? differ from the mean age of the senior high school students enrolled at the rural school. So in this case, we could say that the null hypothesis would be there is no significant difference uh, between the mean age of the students enrolled in the urban school and enrolled in the rural school. And then the alternative hypothesis would be there is significant difference between the mean age of the senior high school student enrolled in the urban and enrolled to the rural schools. Okay, so where the, the mu there is the mean age of all the senior high school students enrolled at the urban school. And the other uh, mu sub 2 there is the... Uh, the mean age of the senior high school students 
uh, enrolled at the rural school. Okay, so this would be the assumptions of the test to determine the difference between two means. So the first one should be the sample must be independent for each other. And that is, there can be no relationship between the subjects of each sample. And the standard deviation of both samples must be known. And if the sample size are less than 30, the population must be normally or approximately normally distributed. So this would be the formula, very similar to the t-test. However, in this case, uh, we are going to have that uh, it should be uh, independent to each other and it should be uh, greater than or equal to 30. So the theory behind testing the difference between two means is based on this uh, selecting the pairs of samples and comparing the means of the pair. So the population means need not to be known. Okay, so all possible pairs of samples are taken from the population. So the, the mean for each pair of samples are computed and then subtracted. And the difference are plotted. So if both populations have the same mean, then most of the differences will be zero or close to zero. So that's why, uh, as what I have mentioned in the previous slides, that the general formula or the general format for the formula is you have the observed value minus the expected value all over the standard error. So as we can see here, our uh, x bar sub 1 minus x bar sub 2 is our observed difference. And our expected difference is the mu 1 minus mu 2, okay, which is of course equal to 0. Okay, because our null hypothesis is mu 1, my, uh, mu 1 equals mu 2. Okay. And then finally, the standard error is the difference uh, of the difference rather is the denominator, which is this portion. Okay. So let's have an example. The researcher hypothesizes that the average number of sports that the colleges offer for males is greater than the average number of sports that the colleges offer for females. A sample of number of sports offered by college is shown okay, at the right, and at alpha equals 0 0.1, is there enough evidence to support the claim? Assume that the mu1 and mu2 is equal to, and not mu, so the population standard deviation okay, of both samples okay, is equal to 3.3. Okay, so in this case, okay, first one is we are going to determine the, the uh, hypothesis. So let's take the hypothesis for number one. Okay, for number one, so our null hypothesis would be mu1 equals mu2. In this case, our mu1 is male and mu2 is female. Okay. And then our alternative hypothesis staying, stating here that the male okay, has greater opportunity okay, as compared to the female in terms of their sports. And this is the claim. Okay. Now, in this case, we can now uh, use the, uh, to the second step is we are going to compute the z, uh, computed, computed z uh, value. So take note that our formula, okay, our formula, you have uh, the sample of male minus the sample mean of female minus the expected, okay, oops, this one, mu2 all over, you have there the square root of the uh, variance of the first mean, uh, the first sample divided by the number of elements in the first sample plus the variance of the second sample over the number of samples in the second sample. Okay, so let's try to have that one. So these are the, the data. So you have the males and the female. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to get the sample mean. Okay, so you have the average. Okay, 
of the these numbers. Okay, so we have those numbers. So we have 8.56 and we also have a 7.94. Okay, those are the average. Okay, now in the formula, okay, in the formula we are going to have the uh, okay, so the Z is equal to you have there uh, the okay, open parenthesis okay, so the difference of these two numbers okay, minus zero of course okay, divided by okay, oops okay, divided by you have the square root, okay, square root okay, the square root of you have okay, the first one is you have uh, uh, take note that given the sum the sum the population standard deviation is three point three so three point three divided by you have uh, the n sub 1 is 50 because there are 50 uh, elements plus you have there the 3.3 divided by 50 close and close so the answer is you have uh, 1.70649 okay so as we can see here we use the the given uh, standard deviation uh, of 3.3, the population standard deviation. However, uh, in this, uh, in some statistical uh, software, they are not going to give the uh, the population standard deviation. But instead, uh, they are going to use the standard deviation of the. Uh, I wrong. This is not. Uh, by the way, this is not the standard. The, the formula, rather, uh, given that it should be, uh, it should be variance. The variance, rather. So, so it must be equal to uh, this one times three point three. Okay, and this one also must be equal to okay times three point three. Okay, so that must be that must be the the z the z score or the the z uh, value. Okay, because the formula, okay, if we go back to the formula, the formula is a standard deviation. However, the given is uh, not the standard variance rather, but the given is the uh, standard deviation. Okay. Let's try to substitute. So if we are going to substitute here, so you have uh, the 8.56 minus 7.94 minus 0 all over. You have the square root of, okay, the given is 3.3, uh, but this is standard deviation. So you have 3.3 squared over 50 plus you have 3.3 squared over 50 which is equal to 0 0.939 okay so that is our uh, standard this is our uh, computed z value so let's have our uh, tabular z value so our n is equal to 50 Therefore, our uh, uh, the the alpha is equal to zero point one zero, and this is left tail test. Okay, so again, we are going to look for our uh, negative uh, one, our uh, one point something. 0 0.10 mm -hmm. we 
we have one point this one this is the closest so you have this one and this one i'm right okay so the z is uh negative one point two eight okay now take note that our uh, our uh, our this is not left tail but rather it is a right tail test because this is greater than so what we are going to have there is somewhere here so this is uh, 1.28 it becomes positive because it is right tail okay so however what we have the computed is only here 0 0.939 therefore we could now have that the computed z score or, or computed z value is less than okay the tabular which implies that we do not reject the null which also implies that we are going to reject the alternative so in this case since we are going to reject the alternative therefore we could now say that uh, there is no or not enough evidence to support the claim of the researcher okay so that's how we are going to do that one let's try to use the so software in the software in this case what we're going to do is we have go to add-ins make a stat okay add-ins make a stat and then we go to our hypothesis test and then we have compared two independent groups so in this case okay oops okay so in this case our group one would be the male and our group two is the female okay so uh, greater than z test as we can see here okay we have no uh, we have no facility in this software that we're going to jot in or input the uh, given uh, given standard deviation which is 3.3 .3. in this case the the software will use the uh, the standard deviation of the sample okay click okay okay as you can see here uh, our z is 0 0.95 but the computer is 0 0.939 okay, or 0 0.94 uh, round off so why they have different uh, value it's because the standard deviation here is uh, used is 3.26 and 3.27 whereas in the given problem is 3.3 so that's the reason however still the p value is 0 0.1710 which is greater than 1 a uh, 0.10 so still our answer is correct